William, the next poem. A um, couple of months ago, I was asked to uh, do a pharmacy and a talk to open a new office building in London, uh, one of those sort of co-working sites. And I spent the afternoon, about three hours, listening to people's problems. And halfway through, the security guard came in and he said, your 3.30 hasn't turned up. Can I take their place? And I said, of course, come and sit down. What's on your mind? And he said to me, I came out when I was 24, but I'm 32 and I still haven't had a relationship. And I said, that's very sad. What, why do you think that is? He said, I don't know. I'm, I'm loving and I'm kind and I'm upbeat and I'm positive. But I'm Muslim and I'm gay and I can't be both. And I said, you have to listen to this poem. This was written 700 years ago by one of the greatest Muslim poets of all time. And it's all about how men can love each other as well as women. And I read it to him, and he burst into tears, and I think it was probably the most powerful prescription or pharmacy I've ever been involved in. And um, I think it's time for you to all hear it. Tom. Tom. It happens all the time in heaven by Hafez, translated by Daniel Ladinsky. It happens all the time in heaven, and someday it will begin to happen again on earth, that men and women who are married, and men and men who are lovers, and women and women who give each other light, often will get down on their knees and while so tenderly holding their lover's hand, with tears in their eyes, will sincerely speak, saying, My dear, how can I be more loving to you? How can I be more kind? William, just listening to you tell that story about that poem and the effect it had on someone, I mean, you're, it's almost a confessorial role that you're in, isn't it, when you're sitting there? Maybe. I, I feel as though I'm, I'm a cipher or I'm holding hands between that person and that poem. I mean, it's, it's an incredibly powerful and wonderful feeling to be able to simply just connect people to the right poem for their needs. And that's all you really have to do. And um, uh, as I said, I think we live in a world where we want to talk to people, but we're a bit confused because social media gives us the illusion that we're talking to people all the time, and we're not really. And um, I think that makes us even lonelier. Um, doing my pharmacy around the country, the most common ailment is loneliness. And this is really exacerbated by this strange avatar world we live in where people put up, not themselves, on social media. They don't say I'm miserable, I'm lonely, or any of these things. Their lives are filled with friends and likes and so on, and it makes everybody else feel increasingly inadequate.